want to go back to uh, the focus on Europe right now because the euro dropping today for the third day in a row as the European debt crisis continues. Investors worry that Spain and Portugal could follow Ireland in needing help from the EU. And today, even Italian bond yields were climbing. Well, joining us right now to talk about all of this, Mark Grant, Managing Director of Southwest Securities. His out-of-the-box commentary is read in almost 50 countries by more than 5,000 financial institutions. And with us in studio, Mark Dow, Portfolio Manager at Faro Management. He's also a former economist for the Treasury Department and the International Monetary Fund. So to both of you, Marks, welcome. Great to have you here. Thanks. Mark Grant, I'm going to toss Thank it out you. to you initially because for months you've been telling us, uh, even on the heels of some news about Ireland, that, you know, more troubles were to come, that, more, that there would be more problems. Is it playing out as you anticipated or is it worse? It's actually someplace between those two. It's, uh, the problems in Ireland are, are significantly bad, having to do with the amount of uh, bank debt and the amount of debt, uh, bank debt of the Irish bank debt that's held by Germany, France, and uh, Britain. When I did a head count today with a hedge fund in London, it looks like whether the Irish uh, budget is going to pass is down to two or three votes on one side or the other. If the Irish budget does not pass, you're going to watch a tremendous tail spin down as the EU is, is going to find it very difficult to deal with the situation. Mark Dow, you anticipate a tailspin as well? Well, I think the budget is going to pass, but obviously if it didn't, it would be, it would be pretty serious. Right? Why, why do you think the budget's going to pass? Uh, Ireland's under a lot of pressure. Ireland's under a lot of pressure, and they know that there are two things at risk. One, the solvency of the country and their economic well-being, and, and two, the competitiveness. They've, they've built you know, the Celtic Tiger, and they want to hold on to what they, what they have. They've taken a very big hit on the consumption side in, in terms of GDP, and they've amount, uh, amounted a fair amount of debt, and they need to get, their, get out of it. They've taken good policies. Uh, I mean, the, the, their budget that they've uh, laid out is very responsible, both from a fiscal standpoint and also from a competitiveness stand, standpoint. Uh, so they think they know they need to execute it. But it's always risky, right, because there's always someone, an opportunistic politician that stands up and says, my alternative route is better. Uh, and he may even believe it, or he may just be, be being opportunistic. So you never really know, but it looks like the votes li are, are lined up for now. I, I have to take issue with the fact that uh, Mark Grant says that it is worse than he expected. I don't think it could really be worse than he expected, although I do have to give you, <laughs> I do have to give you Mark, uh, uh, props. You, you, you called months ago, I think, that the euro would go down through uh, 130. You were right about that. You now say it's going to go down to 125. You also say Portugal is next with a fair amount of certainty. Now, now, Mark Dow, it is, it is seeming like it could be worse than what you expected because sure. last we spoke to you, you said this is a great move. The bailout of Ireland is going to be okay, and this will calm the markets down. That's exactly what they need. Yep. Do you still have as much confidence as you had, say, two or three weeks ago when we talked to you last? Uh, I, I think that they have to struggle to get out in front of it. The, the EU has been far too reactive and not, and, not, and not aggressive enough in getting in front of the markets. And things got worse because, if you remember, the spreads were widening in Europe for two or three weeks before we noticed it. And they were there. We noticed it, but the S&P was going up, so we didn't care. It's when we went into risk off mode that all of a sudden everything intensified. Mm -hmm. And then the story starts to feed on itself and things get worse and worse and worse. Uh, and then finally, the Irish, they didn't want a package because they had funding through the first half of, of 2011, but the EU said you need to take this because if you don't, Spain and Portugal are at risk. And they, to some extent, they jammed it down the Irish. What story. about Mark Grant's prediction that Portugal is next? I mean, do you uh, think that's a possibility? And if it does happen, do they bring Spain down automatically with them? Yeah, well, it depends on what you, what you mean by Portugal is next. It, it, is, will it be next in availing itself of, of the resources of the European Union in some way, shape, or form? Yes, almost certainly. And then the way in which they do it and what happens with, with Spain simultaneously will dictate whether or not they can short-circuit the market mentality. Because that, that, Spanish that's banks negative. hold so much Portuguese debt. No, I think it's because investors very simply, they say, who's next? Right? Greece, then Ireland, who's next? And you have to get out in front of that with mechanisms to say the next guy in line has funding for the next two or three years and doesn't have to come to the market. Only when the market knows that you don't need them will they calm down and say, okay, maybe the situation is manageable. Let me ask you, because of that experience, uh, uh, what, what do you think about the bailout package that the Europeans have cobbled together? Nouriel Roubini a couple days ago said he didn't think that they could afford to bail out Spain if it really came to that. Is he just too doomy? It really depends on how much commitment they have, uh, how much commitment they have to, to the concept of maintaining the integrity of the Eurozone. And I think they'll be committed to it. Spain is the linchpin, and they're, and they're going to have to pull out every single stop. If they don't, uh, then, then we're in trouble. I mean, this is the short term. The longer term view, obviously, is much more is much more challenging, right? If they can stave off systemic risk now, they still have budget issues to, to deal with. They have banking mismatches and, and, and excess leverage to, to, to deal with. And they have some countries with competitiveness problems that can't, probably can't be fixed, and they might have to leave the Eurozone. But that's further down the road. What they'd like to do is fix the main countries so that when these other countries get fixed, it won't contaminate the core.
I mean, Mark, don't you think at this point, Mark Grant, I mean, that the EU, the IMF, they're going to do everything and anything they can. Maybe they'll wait to the last minute, but to make sure that this plays out in the best way that it can. Well, Carol, I have a slightly different view. I'm a little more negative than your other guest, Mark Dow. I think that the EU, and as you know, because you read it, I wrote about it in my commentary today, that there's a tremendous problem with credibility at this point. I think a lot of European politicians keep saying everything is fine, everything is good, there are no issues. Then you get into it, you look at the numbers, you see how bad it really is. And serious investors, I'm not talking about speculators, but clients of mine that are some of the largest investors in the world are just getting out. They don't trust the numbers and they don't trust the structure that the bailouts are uh, taking. Mark, I mean, Mark Dow, do you trust the numbers that we're getting at this yeah, point? Yeah, I trust the numbers. That, that's not the issue for me. The issue is, and, uh, and this is a real one, the European Union has a coordination problem, right? When, they, when a policy response uh, it has, to be, has to be done on short notice and it's, it's terrain that they haven't covered before, mm. it's difficult to, get all, uh, to hurt all the cats, right? To get them in the, in the room and to decide on something. Are you buying European sovereign debt? No. And I wouldn't buy it until we got over <laughs> 8 or 10. Right, but it's part 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 of the reason. Ten percent yield. Yeah, then you start thinking about it, right? But it, this, we, there's a structural problem right now. All the you know some of the clients that Mark Grant was referring to of his are probably people that that were that were investing in government bonds on a, on a long-term basis, and they said, okay, I know the convexity and I know the duration of these bonds, but they really weren't taking credit risk. Now they realize it's credit risk, and they don't want to be there. That's understandable. And these guys are shedding risk and will continue to do so until year end because they want this stuff off their books for the new year. Now, other guys, more opportunistic investors like us, we would step in. And only if we saw yields go to a meaningful level. Right Spain before is, doomsday. Spain has, been blown, Spain has been blown out of the water, right. but the yields there are only 5.5%. Not very interesting when you compare it to a 30-year Treasury. Mark Grant, saving 20 seconds for you here. Any thoughts here? Yeah, my main thoughts is that if Portugal goes, they, uh, Spain has so much of their debt that it's going to be a huge problem for Spain. And the other thing besides talking about sovereign debt that I would absolutely avoid at these levels all right. We obviously a little technical snafu, but uh, having a great discussion with Mark Grant uh, out there at Southwest Securities. Mark Dow here in New York. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks. We're going to take